we welcome you to the post-game news conference for the 2021 college football playoff semifinal at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. This Zoom will feature Cincinnati Bearcat student athletes appearing one at a time. There are also other Zoom interview sessions with Alabama head coach Nick Saban and additional Alabama student athletes, Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle, and additional Bearcat student athletes. Please check your email for login information. First up is Cincinnati cornerback Kobe Bryant. If you have a question for Kobe, please use the raise hand function. Eric Wilson, go ahead. Kobe, good evening, sir. Um, I just wanted to ask you, in moments like this, and unfortunately, your team had done so well during the regular season, um, what, were, what were some of the messages that your coach said to you guys after this game? Well, really, you know, the first thing first, you know, he, he appreciated us fighting until the end. You know, that was the biggest thing, you know, me being a leader uh, for this team and, you know, the other leaders as well, just you know, kind of piss in together, you know, just to get the guys to just to finish, you know, the outcome of the of the score doesn't define who we are. You know, I'm super proud of the year that we had, you know, as a, a senior who coming back for a fifth year, I have no regrets. You know, I appreciate all the guys fighting for me, you know, as a senior and, and vice versa, you know, so I'm definitely appreciative for all those who poured in off, you know, just for not only not only for myself, but for the seniors as well. Bobby Nightingale, Cincinnati Inquirer, you're next. Uh, Kobe, just what did you think was kind of the toughest thing of stopping Alabama's offense today? Uh, you know, we can, we can always say the, the toughest thing, you know, we'll just we have to go back and watch it on film, you know. It's hard to say, you know, because I was pretty much, you know, doing my job. And, but, you know, the biggest thing, we just have to give our hats off to Alabama. You know, they came out and just beat us fair and square. You know, we have to respect that. And when you – you know, take a, a fair loss like that, all you can do is just keep your chin up and just keep it moving, go back to work. If you have a question for Kobe, please raise your hand in the chat. Kobe, did they do anything that surprised you out there? Not really. I wouldn't say they surprised us, you know, but like I said, you know, they just came out and played football. You know, they beat us fair and square. And like I just said, you know, you just have to give your hats off to them and give respect when it's due. John S., you're next. Yeah, John Shear here with Inscriber Magazine. With Cincinnati getting to this point, a place where people didn't think they could get, do you think this hurts or helps them down the road when it comes to getting in more playoff games? Thank you. Uh, like I said in uh, previous interviews, we don't really we don't really pay attention to the outside noise and what people would think of us. You know, honestly, it's about the team. And you know, like, just like I, I announced, uh, you know, in the locker room for the leaders that's coming back next year. You know, lead those guys is better than what I did. You know, so uh, I tried, that, that was the biggest thing for me as a leader. You know, just to lead the guys for the future leaders. You know, just to so they can get back to this moment. And I always told them, you know, have this have this feeling that you feel right now throughout the whole off season, throughout the spring ball, throughout everything, you know, just come back and just be willing to work and trust behind Coach Fickle because he has a great plan. He's a great coach. And uh, like I said, it was just a great year and I, I'm greatly appreciative. Eric, I see your hand raised. You'll have to unmute to ask another question. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, being a leader on this team, Kobe, I want to know what your message is to the rest of the team. Because you said, you know, you did come back as a fifth year senior. You have no regrets. And, you know, futuristically, sir, I wish you the best should you decide to make yourself eligible for the NFL draft. Uh, but what was your message to the team? 
I literally stood up in front of the whole team and just thanked them. You know, <clears throat> you know, it was just a, a great season. And just like I said uh, earlier in the questions, you know, the final score doesn't determine who we are. It's the fight, you know, from zero, from when the clock hits zero is, determines who we are. And honestly, I feel like we fought to the very end. You know, and just like I said, you have to give respect when it's due. You know, they beat us fair and square. I respect them. You know, they came out and got the job done. But like I just said, I made sure that I grabbed the younger guys, you know, and just to have this feeling, you know, uh, you know, just to use this chip on your shoulder, have this feeling that you're feeling right now, using the off season to motivate you so you can be great and have a better season than what we did now. So that was really the biggest thing for me as a leader is to leave this program better than when I came in, you know. So that's really the biggest thing. It's not about the accolades or anything. It's about me being a leader and being a great example for the younger guys. Next up, Jacob Christner. Jacob Chris from Inscriber Magazine. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Was there when, they, when the scores were around seven to three to ten to three near the half? It was a really close game. Do you think there was anything at all that you might have changed that could have, uh, you know, the, the score, any certain play that could have changed to be able to make it closer? Um, like I said, I, that's pretty hard to for me to answer. You know, like I said, I'm really pretty much focusing on my job. You know, I try not to do other people's jobs, you know, it's about the 1% that I do for the defense and, you know, just to be the leader, you know, every time we got off the sideline, you know, I just told him, keep going, just give me all you got, just give me 100% every play, like just lay it out there for me and I'm going to do the same. So, you know, that's kind of hard to answer, but, you know, I just try to be the best leader I can be for this team. Thank you. For the last question for Kobe, we'll go to Bobby Nightingale. Just kind of a follow up, no regrets coming back for you know, your senior season. Where do you feel like you've grown this year? Where, where do you feel like kind of the biggest difference, Kobe, from last year to now is? Um, just me being a, a extremely good leader. You know, I feel like I've, you know, it's, it's always a blessing, you know, and a great feeling when younger guys come up to me and tell me how great of a leader I am and how much they look up to me. You know, that's, that's, that's better than honestly any accolade to me. You know, character is the biggest thing for me. You know, that's why my family raised me to have great character. You know, everything isn't just about sports. So, you know, just to hear younger guys say how good of a person I am and a leader, that's that was the biggest thing for me. And honestly, that was part of the reason why I came back was to be a better leader, you know, just for the, not even just the back end or the defense, but for the whole team to, so they can have someone to look up to. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you. Next, we'll be joined by Cincinnati cornerback Ahmad Gardner. If you have a question for Ahmad, please use the raise hand function. We'll start with Jacob Christner. Jacob, or do you have a question? Oh, I, excuse me. No, I do not. I do not have a question. I apologize. Eric Wilson. Ahmad, good evening, sir. I appreciate your time. I just would like to get your thoughts on, you know, not necessarily the outcome of the game, but just your thoughts on how Cincinnati played tonight against Alabama? Uh, honestly, I feel like we played to the last whistle, to the clock hit 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to play in the last bowl game, but this is one I did play in, and I was just very fortunate and made sure the back end, the defense was just finishing strong. Thank you, sir. Bobby Nightingale, do you have a question? Hey, Ma, just kind of what did you see from Alabama's offense from your perspective today? I seen what I seen on film, you know. I ain't expecting to run the ball that much, but uh, it wasn't nothing that we couldn't handle. Um, we tried to execute as much as we could. Bobby, do you have a follow-up? Just what did what was kind of the message in the, the locker room from maybe some of the guys or Coach Fickle or um, just afterwards? Um, just keeping our head up, you know, it's bigger than just football. 
Uh, I had the honor to play with all of my teammates this year. This is a huge blessing. Um, I feel like we won't, we went out like we were supposed to, but we should have got the win. If anyone else has a question for Ahmad Gardner, please use the raise hand function. John, go ahead. Bobby, do you have another question? Yeah, just how did you feel like Alabama kind of targeted you? It seemed like they went after you a couple of times with Jamison Williams. And um, obviously, it seemed like you held your own tackle on the backfield and breaking up a pass. Um, he's a great player. Uh, I feel like they didn't try to target me as much. I don't, I'm not sure how many targets I had. All I know is he's a great player. And we went out there and played like we were supposed to. And one follow up, just on the on the sideline. I mean, the last couple minutes, the score is what it is. What what do you what do you guys kind of say to each other, or even on the field that last drive? I mean, you, you talked about playing to the final whistle, but um, what are you guys kind of saying to each other out there at the end? That's all we kept saying. Just don't stop. Keep giving everything we got. You know, uh, it would have been easy for us to be like, all right, yeah, we lost. Let's just chill. It. Let's just relax and let them oppose their will against us. But we kept fighting. We have time for one more question. John, go ahead. All right, thank you. This time I'm unmuted. Uh, John Shear in Scriber Magazine. They ran for over 300 yards against your defense in this pivotal game. What do you think you could have done to stop that kind of rushing attack? Thank you. Um, I don't know what we could have did. We did what we prepared to do. Um, as far as the way we schemed up and ran our defense. Uh, hats off to them. They had great O-line, great backs, you know, and they showed that. That's it. Thank you very much. Next up is Michael Young. If you have a question for Michael, please use the raise hand function. Bobby, go ahead. Michael, just kind of, can you describe just kind of what you saw from Alabama's defense? Um, you know, six points for you guys kind of made it difficult for you guys to, to punch it in today. Um. Very fast and physical, as you can, uh, as you guys saw. You know they fly around a lot, sideline to sideline. Um, they have great players. Um, they did a lot as far as you know up front uh, with their front seven, and they did a lot on the back end with their you know variations of different coverages. Um, they you know they definitely showed their hand today, um, but they did a good job. They executed really well, and you know hats off to them. Next up, we'll go to Eric Wilson. Michael, thank you for your time, sir. Uh, you know, we just spoke to Kobe and we just spoke to Ahmad and they said that, you know, this team played to the very end from whistle to whistle. Can you just talk to me about, you know, during these moments where you knew you had to make some type of play just to get a stop or something to turn this game around? What was part of your, not only your game plan, but just your mindset with seeing what you could do to disrupt Alabama? Um. Nothing really in particular other than stick to our game plan. We were confident with our game plan going in, um, confident in our coaches and what they set up for us. Um, ultimately, it was just, you know, we were just thinking about, you know, when we got the chance, when our numbers called, make the play. Um, nothing too deep, nothing too specific other than, you know, when you, like I said, when your numbers call, you make the play any form that may come in, whether that's a catch, whether that's a block, whether that's a run. Um, it didn't matter. You just, you know, do your job to the best of your ability and, and let everything else take care of itself. Bobby, you have a question? What were you guys kind of saying to your, to each other? You had a, quite a number of three and outs just on the sidelines after those. What are you guys saying to each other um, on the sideline trying to keep yourselves in the game? Um, we just knew we'd get another opportunity, you know, just keep our, our foot on the pedal. Um, 
and you know when we go out there, just make the most of it. Like you said, we didn't have too many you know rah rah guys trying to just galvanize the group. I think we have a you know a pretty strong group of a very you know senior led, a very uh, you know intrinsically motivated group to where no one has to necessarily call out or preach or anything like that. We just knew what the task was at hand, and you know we knew when we get opportunity, we just go out and make the best of it. If anyone else has a question for Michael Young, please use the raise hand function. Bobby, go ahead. As you mentioned, you know, a big senior class. I mean, what, what was kind of the message in the, the locker room afterwards? Um, hold our heads up. Uh, you know, obviously we knew this wasn't going to be an easy task, but it's the fact that we made it this far. Um, when, you know, so many people have doubted us. And even though we don't necessarily pay attention to the outside noise, we know it's there. Um, and the fact that we pulled off what we did and the fashion in which we did it, um, just to hold our heads high and that, it, you know, it won't be the last time you see Cincinnati. And, I, and that's just not saying, you know, from a senior standpoint, I truly wholeheartedly believe that this will not be the last time you see Cincinnati on this stage. So I'll just leave it at that. Michael, thank you. Appreciate it. Next, we'll be joined by Jacob Renfro. If you have a question for Jacob, please use the raise hand function. Bobby, go ahead. Hey, Jacob. Um, just kind of how did Alabama kind of, I don't know, match your expectations of what you expected going in in terms of their defense? Yeah, so we knew Alabama was a phenomenal football team going in. You know, they got great players all around. And so we, we expected them uh, to be really good. And, you know, that's what they were. They, they came out and they, uh, they punched us in the face a little bit. And uh, I, we needed to respond better. And, I, you know, I believe that started with me. I, needed to, I just needed to be better in, you know, my communication, my calls, and just how I play football. Eric, you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, Jacob, I appreciate your time, sir. Being a part of this offensive line, can you talk to me about what Alabama's defense was able to uh, do, you know, to maybe disrupt your game plan this evening? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we knew their defense line was going to be super active, um, and they were super active. They were, you know, stunting, they were blitzing, they were looping. And, uh, yeah, they were they just caught, off, caught us off guard just a little bit, and, uh, you know, I believe we responded all right. Um, but, you know, we just need to be better in the future. Bobby, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, just um, kind of what was the reaction? I mean, you guys had two drives with field goals to begin the first half and the second half. Kind of, I don't know, does it feel like a success? You guys are able to get points on the board or disappointment that not able to score a touchdown when you guys were close to the goal line? Yeah, so, I mean, our main goal is to score touchdowns. and. You know, when we get stopped on the nine yard line, you guys held for a field goal, it's not the best feeling in the world. Um, so, you know, we just needed to finish more drives and, you know, put, put some more points on the board. Eric, did you have another question? Yes, thank you. Jacob, I just wanted to know what your message was to the team. And more importantly, you know, uh, Mr. Young said that this was not the last time that we're going to be seeing Cincinnati in these types of playoff games. Just wanted to know what your thoughts were around that, sir. I'm in 100% agreement with uh, with Mike. Um, you know, we got a phenomenal team coming back next year. I know we're losing a lot of seniors, um, you know, who built this program. But our young guys who are stepping up, they've stepped up, they stepped up a lot. And, you know, we're looking forward to this, the offseason, you know, get ready, get prepared for next year, because this will not be the last time you see Cincinnati in the playoffs. Any other questions for Jacob? Please use the raise hand function. Bobby, go ahead. What were you guys kind of saying to each other on the sidelines, on the field, just as time wound down, the score is what it is. Um, but a, a couple of guys before you were talking about just play hard to the final whistle, and they felt like you guys accomplished that. Yeah, you know, never give in, never give up. That's not who we are. That's not how we train. That's not how we do anything. Um, so just never give up, fight to the finish no matter what the, end, the outcome was. So, you know, just never give in. 
Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Joining us next will be Darian Beavers. If you have a question for Darian, please use the raised hand function. <clears throat> Bobby, go ahead. Darian, just um, obviously the rushing attack, they were able to get over 300 yards today. Just what do you think made their run game so tough to stop? They have really good players. Um, they have a really good coach and really good players, and they schemed us up good. And um, we try to make some adjustments, try to slow them down. But like I said, it's just really good players on our team. Eric, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Beavers, appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much. I just wanted to know, in, in situations like this where your team had thrived so much in the regular season, and you, you face a, a tall task, if you will, like this. Was there ever a moment where the game got to be too much for you, in your opinion? No, no. I mean, this is what we live for, man. We play football. So when our back's against the wall, we, we try to come out and uh, change the, I guess, change the aspect of the game. Like I said, they just have really good players, and they play their heart out. Um, we played our heart out, and they just, they just got the win. Eric? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, just a quick follow up to that. Um, both Michael Young and uh, Jacob Renfro said that this is not the last time we're going to see Cincinnati in these types of playoff games. I just wanted to get your opinion on that, please, sir. Yeah, I think this team is a top 10 program. So I definitely, you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of Cincinnati in the future. Um, we have a lot of young talent. Um, obviously, we have a lot of seniors leaving, but we have a lot of young talent that's going to step up and uh, keep Cincinnati rolling. Thank you, sir. John, do you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. John Shear, Inscriber Magazine. Thank you for taking time uh, after the game. Appreciate that. Uh, what did you say or what was your message after the game to your guys uh, with a hard fault loss? Thank you. I just told them I love them. I love them, and it's an honor to play with them. Um, that includes the seniors that came back with me. That includes the young guys, like I said, that's going to step up and play next year. Um, I love all my teammates, and that was just the message that we had to get through and that they – that they have a mission too, and that they have the same goals that we had. The young guys need to step up and have the same goals, and that's just the message we have. We have time for a couple more questions for Darian Beavers. Please use the raise hand function in the Zoom. Bobby, do you have a question? Yeah, just Darian, what did you think kind of that long touchdown pass near the end of the first half kind of did for you guys? I mean, it was right before halftime, gave him a two-score lead, but um, obviously, you guys had time to talk about it at halftime as well. I mean, any touchdown hurts. We try to our defenses are thriving on just trying to make plays and trying to stop the defense. I mean, stop their offense from scoring. And um, obviously, every touchdown hurts. But like I said, we have to go. We have to forget that. We have to go one play at a time. So once that uh, touchdown happened, we just try to forget about it and keep our heads up. And obviously, we went straight into halftime. But like I said, we just had to play the rest of the game and try to forget about all the touchdowns and all the success they had. So, like I said, they have really good players. So, shout out to them. Is that just as a follow-up, just like third quarter, it seemed like you guys came out pretty strong. I mean, had some good stops um, to begin the third quarter. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I said, we just got to go one play at a time. So, obviously, they had that touchdown. But like I said, in the third quarter, we came out, tried to come out strong and set the tone. Um, and we just, that's just what we pride ourselves on. Next up, we have Gary Miller. Hey, Darian, uh, I know you guys, you, you were there four and eight, but, you know, there's only one loss each of the last two years. You guys all come from high school programs that played for state championships or were just dominant. How much harder does that make it when you haven't had that experience and it's in the final game? It's, I, I mean, I came from UConn, so my first two years at UConn, we had a lot of uh, losing, so... It's it's always hurts. Every every loss hurts. We put our heart and soul into this game, so every heart, every uh, every loss hurts, and it's never it's never a good feeling after the game. Um, so, yeah. Darian, thank you. Thank you. We're gonna have one more. Brian Cook will be joining us momentarily.
If you have a question for Brian, please use the raise hand function. We'll get to you all just as quickly as Brian can join us. What's his first name? Pierce. Why can't I think of Pierce's first name? Change, change of plans. <clears throat> the next Cincinnati student athlete will be Alec Pierce. Brian Cook will not be joining us today. We'll have Alec Pierce instead.
The final Cincinnati student athlete is Alec Pierce. He is joining us now. If you have a question for Alec, please use the raise hand function. We'll start with Bill, Bill Carroll. Uh, first of all, Alec, I know obviously there's an internal you wanted to do. Oh, Bill Carroll, that's in both sports. Uh, you wanted to, but I hope that you will remember for the, the rest of your life what a special year this was. Now, my, my question is, it seemed like with all the extra preparation time, you sometimes think you might see a lot of very different, exotic and new things, but from what I've seen from both teams this year, it seemed like you guys sort of did what you, what you normally do, but were there any things that were different or were a surprise different from what you'd seen on tape when you studied Alabama? Uh, no, I mean, they, they kind of did the same things we were expecting. Uh, Might have changed a little bit of things up, but for me, it was, you know, a lot of man coverage out there. And, um, you know, they, they, they bailed a lot or bailed out a lot and we're trying to keep them, keep us in front. Um, but yeah, that, that's all stuff we saw in film. And I, you're right, we did stick to what we've been doing all year and didn't try to change anything because uh, we didn't think we needed to. So, yeah. Next question comes from Gary Miller. Gary, do you have a question? If so, please unmute. Move on to Eric Wilson. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Eric Wilson, Sideline Sports and the Inscriber. Alec, I just wanted to ask you, sir, was there anything specific that you said to Desmond after the game? I just thanked him for everything. You know, it's been a great ride with him. He's an extremely special player. Um, and, you know, I've just enjoyed every minute of catching balls from him. And he's just been a great leader of this team. And, really got us to the point where we we're at. So I thanked him for that. And just a, a real quick follow-up, if I may. Um, a lot of your teammates have said that this is not the last time that we are going to see Cincinnati in these playoff type situations. I just would like to get your thoughts on this, sir. Well, I agree completely. I mean, you know, you see they're, they're moving conferences in the future. I think it'll just lay out the uh, blueprint for them even, you know, easier for them to or they'll, they'll have more much more opportunities for big games and be able to you know have a, a more fair chance of getting in and I think you know coach Fick and the coaches are building something special and they're bringing in great recruits and guys a lot of guys that haven't got chances to play uh, just because we've had s such an older team but I'm, I'm really excited to watch them in the future and see see what they do next question Bobby Nightingale Hey, Alec, um, just from your perspective, the two passes in the end zone, uh, one got knocked down at the line of scrimmage, but it seemed like it's some separation and the, the one you had to jump for. What, 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 can you kind of take me through those plays, those two, um, just what it was like from your perspective? Yeah, they're both similar plays. Uh, the one was the first one was an RPO with um, glances on both sides. Uh, Dez pulled it. I think he saw the, the safety down, so he pulled it and gave me a, sh a chance and, you know, unfortunately got knocked down at the line. Um, and then the second one was a similar play, but it was a straight pass play. It was um, a, a post actually, but, you know, down in the red zone, the post basically turns into like a glance and uh, same thing. I had enough separation, got my hands on it. Should just wish I was able to bring it in. We have time for two more questions. We'll go to John. John Scherer, Inscriber Magazine. Thank you for taking time out of your night. With such a prolific offense such as yours, how did Alabama shut you down to only 144 passing yards, shutting down you and the rest of your receiving core? Thank you. Um, I think they did a really good job getting after the quarterback and just not allowing us to have time to go through our progressions and uh, give the receivers a chance to make plays. Final question from Bill Carroll.
Bill, please unmute your line. Yep. Thank you once again uh, for your time, Alex. And you face a really, really good defense, particularly a really good secondary, every time you go to practice. And now you obviously face this team. Uh, in what ways was this familiar in terms of the things they do and the kinds of guys you were playing against when you played Alabama tonight? And in what ways were they different from the, the very fine defense that you face every time you go to practice? Um, I mean, I get, I think I get a unique look every day in practice. I get a mod Gardner up pressing in my face, um, not choking out any space there is. You know, Alabama today, they played a lot. They bailed off me most of the game. Uh, they didn't really do a whole lot of press. Um, they did a lot of zone. But, you know, our defense is mostly man, or at least on the outside, it, it plays out as man. Um, and they're really aggressive and physical and press. And, you know, the, I think those guys, you can see, they, they, do, they do a great job. Uh, they, they did a good job containing Alabama today, I thought. Um, so they're really, we got some special players on the outside. Alec, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your coverage of the college football playoff at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. A full transcript along with video and audio files from all post-game press conferences will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic section of the College Football Playoff media portal. To gain access to the portal, send an email to licensing at catapultsports.com. All right, done with work. Thank you. 